Now that we have understood the initial load, we want to step things up and understand how now, once we have loaded all of that data in the initial load, we can now also implement the so-called delta load. So again, the delta load is this process where we are now incrementally loading the data. And we do this now on a regular basis. So we set a frequency maybe once per day, maybe every night, we load now the new data from the source system that we have not loaded before. And we of course bring it first into the staging layer and then we bring it also into the core layer. So this is why we need to always have a delta column for this process. And this needs to be available for every table that we are using in our data warehouse. And typically this is a timestamp of a transaction or some type of create date. So even though you can see that in this case it's a date, ideally it is really a timestamp. Usually this is available in the source systems and with that we can identify the new data that has not been loaded yet in our ETL process. So this is what we always should have available to be able to set up a delta load in our ETL process. And note also that we are not changing anything in the workflow. So everything just remains the same. We have the same transformations. So our ETL process basically has exactly the same structure and it is in fact the same ETL process, except that now we run this periodically and we also have some filter in place on these delta columns. So now not all of the data is always loaded, but only the data that has not been loaded before. And also sometimes if we don't have some timestamp available, we can have a look if there are some other possibilities. So some other columns that we can use to identify new data. So this could be alternatively also be something like a primary key. But of course we have sometimes difficulties if it's just a natural key that is just maybe a random set of numbers. So if we want to use a primary key, we need to make sure that it's a incremental number. So something that we can really use to identify what is a new row that has not been loaded before. And how can this now be implemented in practice? Let's assume in our last ETL run, the row with the highest value on the sales key or also possibly on our transaction date on our timestamp is the value for example in our case 4. So we basically remember the maximum value of our timestamp or our delta column. So in our case we just take the maximum of the sales key which is 4 and then in the next run we just when we read the data from the source systems put this filter on this sales key. So we just store the result usually in a variable. So for example, it's a variable called X and this has now the value four. And then in the next run, we just load that data where the sales key is larger than four. So in this case, larger than four is only five. So in the next run, we would only load this row number five. But now the question might be, what is if there is no delta column? And first of all, usually there is a delta column. Usually there is a timestamp that we can use, but sometimes if the data is really not a good shape and we don't have a delta column available, we have a few alternatives. There are even some tools that can capture automatically what data has been loaded already by the metadata. So in that case, if we have such a tool and this is available to us, we don't need to worry because then, then this is done automatically just by the metadata, what data has been changed, what data is new, and this is then extracted automatically. Usually this is not the case though. In such situations, this can be the case usually for dimension tables where we don't have a time available. And in that case, we can do also a full load every time our ETL process is running. And then we just compare this 
new data with the already loaded data, if there are any changes, if there are any additional columns. Of course, typically this is the case not for our fact tables, because there we usually do have a timestamp, but for our dimension tables. And then again, here we have to be a little bit careful how much data is that. So depending on the volume, if this is a huge dimension table, we have to be a little bit careful with the performance. So how much time do we spend on the source systems? What are then times where we can do this load? But since this is usually dimension tables and they are typically not super large, we should be okay. And we usually then don't slow the source systems down too much. Or we can also just decide to run this during the night, for example, if there are some hours where we can put a little bit of load on these source systems. And also, of course, what we have to keep in mind that the more data we load, the longer also our ETL process can take. So this is then also a little bit critical if, for example, we want to have a very high frequency on our ETL. So for example, the business users request that this ETL process needs to update the data, let's say every 30 minutes. And then our ETL load could take maybe 40 minutes. So this is because maybe we need to do some full loads and of course they take more time. But this is then of course something that we have to live with. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. And therefore, if we are thinking about doing a full load, we just should keep that in mind and also decide if the table is not too large to make a full load. So this is something that we should do. But now, how is this implemented in practice? That's what we want to see in the next lecture. Now that we've walked through the extract process, we want to see how the data can be loaded. And we want to look at the whole workflow to better understand how the load process then works. So we have seen that once we have run our ETL and then we want to run it again, the staging layer is empty because we always after each run empty the staging layer. So now we assume that this staging layer is empty. And now we, of course, run a delta. So we have stored the value of the maximum value of the delta column. And now we know what is new data in our source systems. And then this data is just filtered and extracted into our staging environment. And now from this staging environment, all of the data will be pushed with the transformations into our core layer. And we use usually insert update for that. That means we have different types of how the data is written into this core layer. And of course, this is depending on whether the data might already exist. So there might be some updates necessary or if the data can just be appended. So let's have a look at the several options that we have available in here. So the common type is just a very simple insert update. That means we get additional data that is not present yet, that has never been loaded into our core layer. And then this data will just be appended in our table. So now after we have seen these rows have existed before, we append those two additional rows. So this is a very simple case. Sometimes this is a more rare case. We also have some updates. So this can be now also done automatically via, for example, insert update tools that once a value already exists. So for example, we have the primary key number two and this value already exists and this value has changed, then this value can also be updated. And again, there are usually tools that handle that automatically. So they recognized usually based on the primary key if that data already exists and then if that data needs to be updated. And if it does not exist, the entire row can just be appended to our table. These are the main operations, insert and update, that we are doing during our load process. And you might also note that I'm not mentioning delete. 
because the lead in fact is something that is usually not occurring. We usually don't want to delete data from our data warehouse because we want to maintain the history. Of course, in some cases it might be necessary or we might want to do that, but usually in the common type, this is not necessary. So what is then, you might be asking, happening or what might we want to do if a row in the source system gets deleted. For example, a dimensional value gets removed from our source system. So a product is not there anymore and it needs to be deleted. In that case, still we usually should not delete that row, but we can add an additional column that is just helping with the administration. And this is then basically a flag, whether this is maybe a current product or not, whether this is something that has been deleted from the source system or not. So if there should be data deleted on our source systems, this is how we should usually handle that, by just adding an additional color. So this is now how we load that data using insert update in our data warehouse. But now we also want to understand what are the different steps in between for our transformation process. So that's what we want to do in the next lecture. Now it's time to get again a little bit more practical. So what we want to do in the next few lectures is we first want to get a quick introduction into our ETL tool, which is PDI. So it's Pentaho and we just want to give a quick introduction. Of course, I don't want to make this into a complete and in-depth Pentaho course. This is just supposed to be a quick demonstration of how things could look like in practice. And of course, if you want to use another tool, you can do that as well, because we are mainly focusing in this course on the fundamentals and principles for data warehousing. But we again want to make it a little bit more practical. And that's why after that quick introduction, we also want to set up a quick and very simple workflow for our staging layer in our ETL. So therefore, let's go ahead and first start up Spoon. This is the graphical interface for PDI. So we remember that we have installed PDI by just downloading this folder. And if you have not set up that yet, you can of course go back to the lecture where we have set up Pentao. What we need to do to open that up is just open up this data integration folder and then scroll down to this Windows batch file called Spoon. We double click on that and then this interface will open up. And then just in a moment, this window will open up. So this is now Pentao data integration. And in here we can now set up our workflow for our ETL. So what we need to do is we can set up some transformations and that's why first we want to go to new transformation. And later on we see that we have not only transformations but also jobs. And basically we'll dive into that later on more in practical examples. But for now already we can set up transformations. And in these transformations we build a very short sequence of some transformational steps. And then we can save this sequence into a transformation. And then all of our transformations we can now play into a job. And again in this job we then have a sequence of transformations and this job then can be scheduled. So basically this is then our ETL process. But of course now let's make it practical. So to do that we just want to click on new transformation to start up a new transformation. We see this is now called transformation one and we have this big canvas in here. In here we can now drag and drop just the different built-in tools to set up our workflow and the built-in tools we have on the left side. So in here we have all of the different tools built in and we have different categories. For example, we want to read data from different data sources, for example, CSV files, different 
JSON files from S3 storage and all of the different data sources that you can imagine. Of course, later on, we also need to output the data. In our case, we want to write it into a database. And of course, we have many, many more steps. For example, different types of transformations. But in our case, we want to start with data input, of course. And if we want to use one of these tools, we can just either double click on them or just drag and drop them into the canvas. And of course, what we can also do is use this little search bar. So for example, we can search for CSV and then get all of the related steps that have CSV included. So in our case, we now need to set up the step that we have dragged into our canvas. And to configure that, we can just double click on it. And in here, we can now set things up for this little step. So for example, we can give this step a new name. For example, we can call it CSV input for sales data. And then we need to, of course, find a file. And the great thing is that we have some sample data. And this is just in our folder where Pentaho is also included. So in our case, we can find this sample data just by going to data integration, afterwards samples, transformations, and then we find the different files. And in here, we find now this sales data. So we find the sales data in here. And we can now just copy that path. So just click in this little bar and then we want to copy that path and we can now paste that in here. So we can now just paste it. Of course, you can also browse manually, but in our case, it is just fine to paste in the path in here. Of course, we also need to add another backslash and we want to enter also sales data.csv and what we can do is we can first click on get fields so we do that click on ok and this gives us now the structure of the tables so now we know or pentaho knows that these are the column names these are the different data types in these fields and also the additional information such as for example the format and now, once we have that, we can click on preview and see how the data really looks like. So for example, we want to see the first 100 rows and indeed we can now see that this is how the data looks like. And we can already see if there are maybe some mistakes, some things that we might want to adjust. So for example, later on, we could decide that these values should be in all caps for this status column. And this can be done then of course in the subsequent steps as well. But for us, this is now fine. And we can now just click on okay. And if we want, we can now of course add an additional step. So for example, we just want to add a quick string operation. So in the search bar, we enter string and we drag and drop the string operation. And now we, of course, need to connect those steps. So we want to, of course, execute them in a sequence. First, we want to read the data and then we want to make some additional transformations. And to do that, we can just select the first step. And now we need to hold the shift key. And now we can just drag and drop this arrow onto our next step. And we want to then choose main output of step. And now we can again, of course, set up this next step by just double clicking on it. And in here, we can now first click in this in-stream field and we want to, for example, adjust the status. For example, we can turn all of the letters into uppercase letters. So this is just a very quick demonstration, a quick example. We can click on OK and now we can run this workflow. To do that, we click on this little play button. And before we do that, so we can try to click on run, we need to save our transformation. Otherwise it cannot be run. We click therefore on yes. And now we can enter a name. We want to enter just staging because later on we want to make 
this into our staging workflow. Therefore, we save it now as staging. And then this will be executed. And now, of course, we can also preview how the result looks like. To do that, we can just select this step and then we have this little tab with preview data. And indeed, now we see that the status is now shipped and it is in all caps. And previously, if we go to the first step, it was not in all caps. So this is how we can set up a quick transformation step and of course, we now also want to do this really for our staging layer. That means we want to build a little process to read data, a dimensional table from a source. And then we want to write this into our data warehouse. And this should be in a database. And that's what we want to do in the next lecture. And we need to also have a look at database connections. And therefore, that's what we are going to set up quickly in the next lecture.